Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pick a card reading. Today in the jar we have got quotes by Andy Warhol and some of you will remember that last week I mentioned we'd have Andy in the jar and that is because I did a master series on him so I got to study him quite a bit and as I read the quotes by him I was really impressed actually by his wisdom and his knowledge and what he knows and I did get a sense that he might have been misunderstood by people but somehow this topic popped into my head of you know have you been misunderstood by society I just thought that could be a really fun thing to explore I think artists you know are very often misunderstood people and I know I've gone through this quite a bit in my life especially in my career in advertising you know, when I used to work in advertising, I would often be totally misunderstood by people. That, and it, it happened numerous times. I ended up kind of um, capitalizing on this very thing. Uh, it, it ended up becoming a bit of a feature of mine later in my career. But I'll give you an example. At the very beginning of, even before I started working in advertising, I did these night courses. In advertising this was here in Sydney Australia I went to UTS and I do these night courses and there was a student prize basically for a brief that was to design a campaign for the Sydney Swans football team and the winner would have their work published and get tickets to go and meet the team and do all of that and whatever so I created some kind of campaign and they wanted you to submit your work but not put your name on the work so even better. I was very happy about that. And they talked through every single piece at the end and then they revealed the winner at the end. And my piece just happened to win. Um, but it was really interesting when they called out my name, like so I was left to the end and everyone else had stood up and spoken about what, what they created and why and all that. And anyway, at the end they revealed my work. And I remember when I stood up and everyone looked at me, they were all kind of horrified. They were just like, what? How did you come up with that? Because, you know, I'm an Asian girl. I've never been to a football match in my life, <laughs> right? So it was kind of weird and funny. And pe But people were just like, what? How did you come up with that? And I think this has happened to me so many times in my career that, you know, people they just look at me and, and they probably think that I'm polite and neat and organized and that, but that's probably all they think, you know, they don't think that I'd have anything beyond that kind of thing. I also get the comments sometimes by people who say, oh, I didn't think you'd be into that. And it's like, I hate that comment because it's like, well, why not? Why, why can't I be into that? Like whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting how, some people, and some pe this is the thing, some people get you and some people don't. Some people can look past your exterior, they can see the more that you are, you know, there's all that stuff. So I just thought that would be fun to explore today. Uh, and yeah, let's see what comes, let's see what happens in, in the groups. I'm, I'm really interested to know what, what comes today. So feel free, as always, to choose from group one, group two, or group three, and I will see you in your reading. Hi there, group one. If you chose group number one, you are in the right place. Let's, before I shuffle these, let's take a couple of cards from this animal spirit deck. I thought what we could do is shuffle one for, like, like a row for how does society see you and who are you really and we'll see what the contrasts are in this reading I have never done this before I have no idea what's going to turn up it's amazing these topics just pop into my head I do need to write them down actually because um, sometimes there have been some topics that yeah I, I thought oh that'll be fun to do and then I never did it so we'll take these two for a start how are you by the way I hope your week is going well wherever you are um, we'll take one of these and yeah, and we'll take tarot as well. It is freezing cold weather here. 
I'm wearing my hoodie and I have the hood on. The hoodie part of the hoodie is on my head or whatever you call it. The hood part. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying today, guys. Ah, oh, But at least it's the morning. I've got the morning sun. So we've got some daylight here, which is really good. Uh, okay. But yeah, it is so cold. I have two pairs of socks on. I've got like just oh, layers like you won't believe. I don't wear this much in England. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And that's the thing. English people who live in Sydney, they often say they, they're surprised by how cold it is here in winter time. It really, really gets cold because the houses are just not equipped. We're not equipped for, um, you know, cold weather. Some people are. There's a guy down the road who's got central heating. Oh, he's the envy of the street right now. Oh. All right, let's have a look here. Um, why don't we shuffle another one after we see some cards? Let's see what's going on. Okay, so this row is going to be how the world sees you. Let's see. Okay. Oh, good start. Elephant. Excellent. Well, great. Yeah, it's always good for the world to see you well. And to me, I think an elephant is um, it's very grand, you know. A little bit of fire there too. That's beautiful. Realization. Wow. Great. Well, maybe the world does see you as someone very wise, that you're always making realizations, that you're always joining dots, unlocking new worlds, seeing beyond. Good, great. Sun in the 10th, wow, my favorite star. I, I had a reading with one of you just, I think it was this week, and you had Sun in the 10th, and I said to you, of all the 108 placements, I, I really do think Sun in the 10th is my favorite. Success in all undertakings, winning, strong, happy, famous, intelligent, has money, power, children, loves music, acquires ancestral wealth, magnetism. Magnetism? Yes. Wonderful. Well, good. All right. So you're clearly making a wonderful impression on the world out there. And that's great, right? Because, you know, oh, the full new beginnings. Beautiful. Excellent. So, I mean, we've got the sun, the midday sun here. We've got the sun at its strongest We've got the fool, you know, you're willing to try new things, you're daring, courageous, bold. There's a stability here with this animal spirit, so that's really beautiful. All right, let's see what's going on inside. Let's see if there's any contrast. Could be a lot of confirmation, I don't know. The turtle, yeah, yeah. So I think this does match up really well with the elephant here because the elephant is not a fast-moving animal either. Right, so there is something about you that takes your time, you're deliberate, you're careful. You know, and, and maybe you do like to retreat into your shell and that can be, that can be a bit of a Cancerian thing actually because I'm pretty sure Cancer is the crab and Cancerians can be shy, they go into their shell, there's all that kind of thing. There is a shell here. Yeah, beautiful. All right, let's keep going. New beginnings. Wonderful. So again, we've got synergy here with what the world sees and who you are. Because you... And look at that, twice even. Because we've got a new world. We've got a new thing. We've got a new path opening up. We've got new beginnings here. Look at that, it was, it was winter now, there's this beautiful summer sun, there's greenery there. So within you, there's, there's synergy here, there's synergy with what you're projecting out there and what people see of you. And yes, there's confirmation that, that you hold that within as well. Beautiful. All right, Jupiter in the eighth. Healer, rises after a big downturn, long life, poor eyesight uh, or weight issues, might have a secret lover, loss of wealth is possible. Yep, 
Jupiter in the 8th. So we've got this incredible planet in the 8th house, which is the 8th house, of course, it can be, you know, a challenging part of the zodiac. You've got light here. You've got light lighting this up. So you're very wise. To me, this is really sinking in with the elephant. This matches that beautifully. Healer, yes. Natural gifts, natural healing gifts and abilities. Rises after a big downturn. Yeah. Fascinating. All right, let's keep going here. So this is kind of hidden. I think people wouldn't know that about you because they're too busy seeing this. They're too busy. You're being recognized or seen by the outside world as being this leader, top of your game. You know, this can even be corporate high fly. This can be all kinds of things. But, but you're, you're in charge. You're on top. Okay, that's pretty much what the sun is about. You don't have to have a corporate life or any of that. It's not about that, but it's, it's that you're on top of things. But here, I feel like with Jupiter in the 8th house, people may not know or realize about you that you, you're actually very deep and, and that you even have healing gifts. So that's pretty amazing. Jupiter in the 8th doesn't necessarily have to be about loss of wealth. Depending on how it's placed, this can be absolutely excellent for wealth um, as well. I'm pretty sure I was checking out one of the dragon's den people i was looking at their chart and one of them does have jupiter in scorpio so yeah it's an excellent wealth placement as well oh wow death it's fascinating because we've got new beginnings and we've got death and we've got some eighth house here and we've got yes yeah, i mean there's look there's a bit of hiding really there's a bit there's secrets here too okay But it, and this is this is so perfect with this because that's what this eighth house is all about. It's all about exactly, exactly death and new beginnings. That's what happens in the eighth house, right? So incredible. So I think what this is showing me so far is that there's a really deep side of you that people perhaps wouldn't wouldn't guess maybe or they wouldn't realize they wouldn't realize how how deep you are how spiritual you are how you know um you've got occult healing gifts talents all that kind of thing psychic powers even i mean that could be here yeah it's amazing all right let's take a look let's get one more for each so how does the world see you I want one more and then we'll get a couple of quotes. And what's really going on? <laughs> okay, let's take one card. Hmm, that does, no, let's put it back. <laughs> Make it obvious, come on, give me one card. Ooh, all right, it's jumping out, let's take it. Okay, let's see what we've got. Three of coins, yeah, hard working, excellent master craftsman, great at what you do, all that kind of thing. Good, yes, okay, we like that. Page of Swords. So, I mean, it's pretty interesting that with, with all this incredible accomplishment here at the top that people would see, you've still got things to learn, okay? Page of Swords. There's still new things there's still it's like you haven't done it all you haven't learnt it all uh and you know still a lot to learn maybe or something along those lines and that's really great it's a beautiful depiction of the page of swords i love that golden fountain there as well that's gorgeous wow well group number one this is amazing energy on the table and I think and I think a lot of synergy there's a lot of confirmation that what you are projecting to the outside world you very much are but there's so much more to you I think that people probably don't 
realize on a first glance, you know, and that's all right. And the people who are meant to see you, they will, <laughs> you know, we're not meant to be seen so deeply by everybody. All right, let's see what Andy's got to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> look at that. Everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's it, isn't it? Yep, love it. Okay. And what do we have in here? Don't think about making art, just get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it. While they are deciding, make even more art. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's a real message. Any procrastinators out there, come on, you've got to get on now and make your art, make it happen, right? I know, I, I, after, after this, I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna start the next master. I've got him lined up, I've got the music, everything's ready. I just need to sit and write the thing. And yeah, I need, I need that message. It's like, don't think about it too much. Don't procrastinate, don't, don't muck around, just, just pump it out kind of thing. I love that, that's exactly it. All right, let's see what's in here. You need to let the little things that would ordinarily bore you suddenly thrill you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's so much entertainment in this life and in this world, in simple things, you know, in the beauty of a flower. I'm thinking of William Blake here, obviously, you know, and yeah, I mean, holding infinity in the palm of your hand, all that kind of thing. Like, there are worlds within worlds. I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to just get lost, like, in the gaze of a flower, looking at a flower. Because when you stare deeply enough, like, you can even see the kind of, some flower petals have this kind of crushed diamond effect. Like, when you really look really deeply, I used to, oh my gosh, I used to be amazed just with flowers. Yeah. Well, anyway, group one, it's been such a lovely reading. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'm a little bit behind on comments uh, and emails, but I'm going to get on top of that today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Group number two, welcome group number two. If you chose group number two, you're in the right place. Before we shuffle from these, I'm going to draw an animal spirit card. So what we're going to do, so I've done this now, I've done it for group one, they're my experimental group. <laughs> uh, we're going to do one row that is how the world sees you and the next row is going to be what you really are deep inside that perhaps people don't see. So let's draw one for... Okay, let's, uh, that's one for, you know, how the world sees you. And this is who you are deep down inside. That you know, certain people will see, certain people may not see. <laughs> I think that's all by design anyway. All right, what do we want? Hang on, it was this one for you, wasn't it? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> I'm not ready for that yet. We're doing this now. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm feeling my feet on the ground. I feel like I'm not grounded. I am grounded. Do you know what? I haven't gone for my walk this morning. I think that might be what it is. I normally go for a walk in the morning. We're getting sunny days, which is so good and so needed goodness there has been no sun <laughs> oh wants to be here right well jupiter in the 12th house yes this is good this is excellent some well i'm kind of artist there's all kinds of things here all right let's see wow jupiter's making his presence here today cool let's take let's take one of these for each Right. Oh, well, we will take it. Nine of Swords. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> B 
because as part of your work in the world, if you are indeed a light worker type, which I suspect you might be, people might bring you their problems, okay? So we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna see what's going on. So, spider, yes, right. Spider, it's an incredible uh, architecture. I always admire this about spiders. They create such beautiful homes for themselves. I suppose it's a home, but it's also a way of, you know, getting business, <laughs> like getting sustenance, right? <laughs> so it's, it, does a lot, it does a lot of things, this thing here. Sovereignty, queen of the moon, yeah. Okay, we've got Jupiter in the 12th. Now, what immediately popped into my mind when I was looking at that, I was looking in my mind at things like fantasy, healing, healing arts, this kind of thing. But let's see what's written here. But I might go off track. Uh, Jupiter in the 12th spends much time on spiritual growth, potential for long distance relationship. Yeah, if it could be um, sometimes like Venus in the 12th, you know, you'll be separated from your partner for a time. Um, and this could be like for a lady, Jupiter in the 12th, you might be separated from your husband for a time. Potential for long distance relationship, debt or bankruptcy, exposes secrets, doesn't care for material things. Yeah, yes, I do think that's quite true. I think we've, what we've got here is you are quite the light worker, healer type person. And how I'm reading this Nine of Swords is that people feel comfortable bringing you their problems, okay? That is the way that I'm going to read this. Because they see you as, look at that, you're the queen of the moon, sovereignty. This on the card, I've got the box here. She is on the cover of the box, right? So she's the cover girl, right? <laughs> and that's you. You are this incredible person that people see as free and sovereign you've got the queen here you've got a queen archetype here people see you as some kind of healer they feel comfortable bringing you their problems exposes secrets it's like and that that this can be kind of a storage for um secrets right sometimes when there's a planet and i read that that way especially sometimes when there's something in the eighth house but we can in the 12th as well that a planet there can be like a storage area for secrets right and you would be brilliant at storing secrets I would say for I mean you could be even a relationship counselor with this kind of thing or um, you know yeah this is quite interesting so you're some kind of healer light work you've got some natural ability with that I know I might have a touch of this as well because I'll give you an example. Sometimes I, in my life, it's been so weird. People just sit down with me and they're like, they don't even know me, right? And they will tell me everything, like really everything, like a lot. They, they tell me everything. They're just, there's some, I don't know, yeah. So I feel like we've got some people in this group who people feel comfortable telling you their stuff oh i've spent quite a bit of time talking about that and i just realized it's six minutes okay what's going on deep within wow you've got the cosmic egg you are enormously spiritual okay this is like wow to get that is dear yeah, there are depths here my god okay trust egg moon you've got the egg twice it's a lot of kind of um fertility here as well wow rahu in the third outwardly brave receives criticism excellent communicator gift of the gab yeah difficult relationship with siblings strong physique good energy wow you're quite the powerhouse Group two, you're amazing. I'm loving this. Eight of Pentacles and you're hardworking. Wow, wow. Well, the depth of you just is something quite stunning here. And it's good that in some ways that you are perhaps a little bit elusive to the outside world because we've got Jupiter in the 12th. 
it's like people won't be, you're mysterious. There's something mysterious about you and hidden. I think, but there's a, when people connect in with you, it's something um, deep. It's like, yeah, it's like when I have, and I've had these weird things where I've like been on a train. Anyway, someone will sit with me and they'll just start telling me all about their past lives and their kids and they're, oh, I'm getting a divorce now. And it's like, whoa. And it was, you know, it's just, they just say something that happens. Or maybe I've got a bit of this too. I don't know. But you're, this is something amazing. I feel like this is, I don't have it that much. But this is deep. This is like you're hard working, you're quite brave, you're fearless. You'll go into the depths. You've got this cosmic egg thing. You've got egg twice written here. I don't know if you can read that. It says egg. You've got egg twice. It's like there's there's fertile grounds for creativity. You're always creating something. You're always, you know, you're not afraid to try things, possibly experimental, quite fearless in the unseen realms. Amazing. Let's take one more for how the world sees you and what you've got going on inside. So let's take another one for what's going on deep inside that people, and that's the other thing. I think it probably does take quite a level of sophistication to understand you, you know, or to, and to, especially to understand this, uh, the cosmic egg and the, this thing. That's the thing. I mean, trust. I was talking with my mum today about trust, this concept of trust. And it's really fascinating because I might as well quote it. List, list 11, it's quite controversial. Some people won't agree with it, but I, I agree with it. List 11 says that you can fully trust a crooked person and they will be honest with you. It's a principle, right? It, it probably doesn't work 100% here on the earth plane. <laughs> if you're a realist, you will shoot that down straight away. I get it. But I like stuff like that and I do believe in things like that. And I feel like you get that stuff. And you're cool with that kind of thing. Not only that, you probably know how to work all of that as well. And that's great. We need more people like you. All right, let's take a look and see what's going on here. Strength. Yes, I imagine that the outside world sees you as being very strong. Okay, that you're able to shoulder all these problems that people are, you know, giving to you, right? High Priestess, look at that, confirmation. Yeah, the inside and the outside, total confirmation here. You're very aligned. It's really incredible. But you know, I also do think that the reason you are this way is because you probably have had to go through some of this. And maybe like a tiny bit of that is a bit visible to the outside world, but don't feel like... Um, You've got so much that's so powerful and strong and incredible. It's a, it's a touch of the wounded healer here. Just a touch. Just a touch. Otherwise, you're, where you are internally at the moment is that you are just powering forward. You're going for it. You're quite fearless about it. You're working hard. Your intuition is great. You know what to trust, you know what to, you know, if there's something on your path that's blocking you or a pebble on your stone, you'll just eliminate it. <laughs> you know, you're the cosmic egg and trust. It's like, this is strong energy. And I think the outside world sees you that way as well. Let's, let's take a couple of quotes and then we're going we're gonna to wrap up. Got some big quotes here. All right. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I love this. When people are ready to, they change. They never do it before then. And sometimes they die before they get around to it. You can't make them change if they don't want to. Just like when they do want to, you can't stop them. Yeah, and I feel like there's something in your energy at the moment that is unstoppable. Uh, if not, look out for it that that is building that's wanting to come through so i think you're being quite unstoppable but this is this is very much all about healing and transformation and change caroline mace talks about like how the last thing people want to do is change 
that is really actually the last thing they want to do. And me, I quite like change, actually. And a Rahu in an airy sort of place like this, you'll love it. You want to fly in the sky. <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll cut the cords. I'm getting the phrase, burn the books, okay. But you'll, you'll, just, you'll abandon it, you'll leave it, you'll fly, you'll go. You'll... Yeah, I get that. <laughs> Sometimes it can be, yeah, how does it, how do you get someone to be grounded and stay? Yeah. But I don't think that's your problem. But change, Caroline Mace talks about as well, like the rate of, like the speed at which we change in our lives uh, is, is limited by our ability to forgive. I'm pretty sure that's the thing that she points out. Yeah. Change and forgiveness, transformation, healing, all that. You're all over it, group two. Let's keep going here. Sometimes the little times you don't think are anything while they're happening turn out to be what marks a whole period of your life. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty amazing. And that's making me think of the spider and her web for some reason. Like you might be thinking that you, and this could, it could be with social media or something like that. Maybe you think that, oh, well, does anyone actually look at my stuff or, you know, like the web you weave and like, but people are coming and they want to be there. And yeah, I mean, sometimes we don't realize what impact we're having. And, you know, I actually think that's a good thing. Like I actually think it's good to not know. Um, too much about that yeah let life happen I think we're complete group two I think you're just so you don't need an extra an extra quote I just feel like you're you're doing great and keep being you because you're amazing I want to thank you so much for tuning in guys let me know how you get on with this reading in the comments below what resonated and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three, you are in the right place. And what we're going to do is we are going to, before I draw one of these, we're going to shuffle for how the world sees you and what you've really got going on inside. This thing I've got I'm doing here this topic it seems to be working out guys I'm happy with how the first two have gone sometimes I don't know how these unusual topics I come up with are going to work out but this has been working out and that is a good thing okay take that for how the world sees you oh all right that's what you like inside group number three. There we go. Didn't have to shuffle. That really wants to be here. Wow, you're a whale. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Now let's take one from here. All right. How does the world see you? some more and what are you really like okay uh, I'm gonna shuffle now nope. not taking any of those there are too many I think last time we took a little stack for you uh, right oh and by the way I think last time I mentioned there was some root chakra healing or something and geez can't get a card here there's some root chakra clearing and I said oh I'll come up with some ways or ideas of what you can do and I came up with one basically you can watch a haka every morning right for as long as you need to what is a haka it's like a it's like this uh, New Zealand football thing where I think they do this dance together where they scare away the evil spirits is that what they're doing that's what it looks like to me anyway that's a great root chakra sort of activity because it's a group of people. All right, Jupiter in the first. Um, it's a group of people who, let's have a think here. It's a group of people 
who are dancing in unison and it's very root chakra it's very healing to the root chakra that's what i know you can watch the haka type in haka in football h-a-k-k-a that is a cool thing if you need some root chakra therapy they also suggest stuff like drumming and yeah, like being in a band being a musician in a band that's a great first chakra thing to do all right let's see what have we got going on here uh this is how the world sees you all right wants to be here oh we've got two i'm so tempted to put them back in i'll put them back in <laughs> oh gosh i do this quite a bit Sometimes when I rewatch these when I'm editing, I'm just like, what am I doing when I shuffle? Like, it's so strange. Alrighty, there we go. Let's see what's going on. How does the world see you? Oh, that's beautiful. As a swan, they see you as a swan. Maybe something elegant or graceful or feminine. It's good. It's nice. It's lovely. Calm. You know, that is, I do like that. <laughs> that. The swan is calm on the surface, but it's sometimes paddling furiously beneath, right? So it, this can be an illusion. This can be like people see you as being really calm and gracious and effortless, and but actually some serious paddling going on under there. That can be a thing with the swan. Let's take a look what else have we got boundaries yes yes there's discipline about you there's boundaries difficult to get to know perhaps you're difficult to get to know you know not easy to get to know as well jupiter in the first excels at law teaching counseling poetry accumulates fortune good spouse and family respect for elders and is loved by all Ooh, that's good if mars afflicts there is weight gain possible. Yes, that's quite true. Sometimes um, I've seen this in charts so many times. When a person has a strong uh, Jupiter Mars, you know, it, it, it's like there's, there's nothing you can do. You're going to naturally have a bigger build. You won't be able to, to change that. Um, but this is, look at that. We've got a lovely beginning here. But this, this is quite interesting to me. The boundaries thing, perhaps there's something quite Saturnian about you. You've got Saturn in your chart quite strongly. Uh, but you have boundaries, so there is some need for you to have protection. Could also be that your aura is quite open, and uh, and that that is mm, possible. Maybe yes, with Jupiter in the first, your aura might be quite open, <clears throat> and um, for that reason as well, you need to have boundaries. Okay, so that's a good thing. Two of Wands. Yeah, very strategic. Strategic thinker, maybe. Um, you, uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting. You've got the world in the palm of your hand there. So you have some skill at, and, the, and look, you're here on this channel, right? And this is a channel where, you know, we look up at the sky, but equally we look, it's like a microcosm, like this is a microcosm of our 3D reality. It's a small little version of, so you're able to read this, right? So you probably have some skills of reading tarot. Equally, you'll be able to look at the sky. So you're able to look down at some small thing in your hand and interpret and read, but equally you're able to look up at the sky, which is huge, right? Look at that, we've got the whale here. So you're able to take something very large and, and look at the orbits of planets and, and make interpretations from that. Okay, so that, that's pretty amazing. You're a Jupiter in the first house. You're a Jupiterian, so wisdom, right? Uh, yes. Very wise. And I think p that people in the outside world see you that way. I think they see you as being wise and strategic. You've got boundaries. Difficult to get to know. Calm, graceful, elegant. You could be paddling underneath, and I think people will possibly see that as well even <laughs> you might think it's hidden but it's probably not uh let's see here what do you like what do you really like inside all right we got the whale yeah that's 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 big and deep and you know lots of things there let's see what else we got 
creation very creative yeah you're always thinking of something you're always look at that you're always writing something ideas and it's interesting we've got a full moon here in the position of the mind you've got a full mind a busy mind a creative mind okay very creative oh nice venus in the fourth that's oh, beautiful experiences deep motherly love has many friends, cars, properties, is musical, artistic, beautiful manners, enjoys a loving marriage, domestic ease. Wow, I mean, you don't get better than uh, a Venus in the fourth. I, I've got a couple of clients who have got this, have got exalted Venus. I've, well, I've got one I'm thinking of right now. Exalted Venus in the fourth house. And it was amazing because he sent me pictures of where he lives. And I tell you, I have not seen that as a designer apartment, if ever I've seen one. So yeah, Venus, exalted Venus in the fourth. I know for a fact that they live very nicely. Uh, okay. Wow, nine of swords, yeah. So I mean, this can be sorrow, this can be pain. This can be challenge, this can be difficult. This is adversity that you have had to overcome. Okay, and again, we've got the touch of the wounded healer here. Now, we had this in group two. So, and I'm pretty sure for group two, I said, now with them, they had their nine of swords in the top row. Okay, that is different to you. Yours is hidden. People may not know actually what you've gone through. Let's take another one. For the, let's have a look here, for what the world sees. Of who and what you are. Okay. Right. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Celebration. And it's kind of like you're everybody's friend, you know. That's just wonderful. And that's this three women having a beautiful time. Did I use this deck for you last time, group three? I have a feeling I did. But again, we've got, a, we've got a really lovely exterior. What you're presenting to the outside world is what you are. But there is more to you, you know? The moon. Yeah. Yeah. There's fear in here. There's a little bit of fear and there's a little bit of sorrow. But it, that actually is what makes you quite special and mm, different. And is fuel for your art, you know? And you're vast inside. You're not, yeah, I, I would imagine that there's worlds within you as well, you know? You're not, you're not one thing. And I think you've needed the protection, you know, and you need to uphold it. You need to keep preserving that. You need to keep being careful. You need to, to have your boundaries. A little bit of fear here, a little bit of sorrow here. But the promise of what's to come, look at the, there's such beauty and that is all that is all going to materialize if that's the bulk of what's in you like the creativity and this venus in the fourth house that's just beautiful that's a really great thing so a lot of good that is going to um, materialize and manifest for you group number three and keep working <laughs> I would say keep pedaling underneath. Because, you know, and I think I think most people wouldn't wouldn't see the pedaling underneath. They'll see this the grace and elegance and ease and all that. Mmm, I love this quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that fear. I'm afraid. That if you look at a thing long enough, it loses all of its meaning. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's funny because in group one I was talking about staring at a flower and like how when I was a kid I used to stare at a flower petal and I used to see like more colors and even crushed diamond type textures and I used to I'm mean, gonna know my eyes were pretty good back then I used to see all kinds of things in flowers but look at what we've got here we've got this nine of swords and we've got this moon it's like for you maybe you you might experience this where if you look at a thing long enough it loses all of its meaning it's kind of like you can have this experience with looking at an old love letter or something like that where it's just like wow what happened to that you know and you read it and you reread it and you read it and you reread it and it's like wow it's just well, the feeling is gone you know yeah that's pretty amazing all right let's see what else we got going on here uh, okay and your own life while it's happening to you never has any atmosphere until it's a memory gosh yes yes this is so perfect you got the moon here you got all this deep stuff here but it's like and i'm getting that song where is the love that's, that's a beautiful song and it is this kind of um and because there's love here there's venus in the fourth house it's a very loving sort of a you know look at that domestic scene deep motherly love you know enjoys a loving marriage all that right so that's great but yeah your own life while it's happening to you never has any atmosphere until it's a memory and it is that thing of yeah looking at looking back at an old love letter or something along those lines atmosphere memory loss of meaning you know like interesting let's get another quote <laughs> i'll save one for instagram all right let's take this one he's great andy warhol because um you know one of the things i got when i was reading his quotes was that how freeing it is to be an artist like when you're studying materials from the realm of psychology that's good and all that but like it can be a bit boring it can be a bit dry <laughs> as well and and you can feel so free in here like with um with studying the work of artists okay let's keep going here if something's going to happen for you it will you can't make it happen and it never does happen until you're past the point where you care whether it happens or not yes absolutely that's so true and i think you know there's a realism about you here group number three that and i think there's a there's like a realism and authenticity about the way that you love because we do have fantasy here but it's like yeah there's something i think you're quite grounded or you want to be <laughs> something is in destiny's hands for you it feels like there's nothing you can do about this situation that's that's what i'm seeing here group number three thank you so much for stopping by let me know how you get on in the comments below i would love to hear from you and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.